Hey, it's Kevin. Today we're going to go through a very simple example of moving SQL Server data files. In this case, I'm going to move a log file from one drive to another because I don't like them being in the same place as my data files. As always, my details are right there on the screen. Pause it, copy them down, whatever you want to do. Moving on. The current file layout of my Stack Overflow database, since the one that you're used to seeing in most of my examples, partially because it's big and I can work with lots of data and show things, but in this case, uh, it's just the files that I've got. This is not exactly what you'll see if you go get the public data dump, because I've created some additional items here uh, through other projects. The thing to note here is that when you go to Properties of a Database and click on the Files section, you'll get a logical name, a path, and a file name. Logical name is not really used a whole lot other than in file manipulation, like moving one around or creating a new file. Uh, but it is also used in uh, in restore operations if you have to move them there. If you're restoring a database that used to be on the D drive to the E drive, you have to know the logical file name and the physical file name. So pretty much only when you're messing around with the files themselves do you need the logical name. So in this case, uh, we're just going to pretend that uh, you know a well-meaning junior DBA dropped this new this database on the server. Uh, say, moving it from prod to, to dev and put everything on one drive and we're going to be throwing a heavy workload at it, so we want to separate it out. Now, because we're on my laptop here, all I've got is a D and a, D and a C drive, so we're going to pretend that a C drive is a good place for a log file. It's not. Don't do that. All right, so that highlighted file is my log, you know, the logical name underscore log at the end. Typical default is the database underscore log. It's a log file type. And it's currently showing to be on the D data drive and directory stack overflow underscore log dot LDF. All good log files should end with LDF. And there should only be one. Don't put multiple log files in your database. That's a no no. All right. Let's jump right into it. And let me copy and paste so you can think that I type really, really fast, which I don't. This is going to be the beginning piece. There are more pieces coming to it. But essentially, all you're doing is. I don't know if I even need that, actually. But anyway, what you need to do is get everybody out of the database because it's going. To, you're going to have to take it offline. You need full control over it without worrying about transactions. If this is in prod, you care. In dev, you probably don't. But the next step, once you've kicked everybody out, and that's what Rollback Immediate does. It kills the connections, sets the whole database in, in single-user mode, and you've got control. Nobody else can mess with it or do something that's going to cause your effort to fail here. So we, that, this is just a pre-step that I like to do when I'm manipulating databases or offline and whatnot. The database that we're going to alter is the Stack Overflow. And the Alter Database has tons and tons of commands. This is just one of them. Uh, and this one falls under the file type operations of the Alter command. We're just simply modi modifying a file location. The name, this is the logical name, and I've got it right here as well. So we're just telling, we're going to modify this file in the Stack Overflow database. We're, essentially, we're telling the master database what we're doing here. And what we're changing is the file name, which in this terminology is the path and the actual file name itself. The new file name is going to be in my default SQL Server directory on my laptop. And we're not changing the name. That's what it already is. But I'm just changing the location is all I'm doing here. So if I run all of this, cross your fingers, it worked. And this is the message I expect to see, which I already had down here for you. It basically says, we modified it in the system catalog, and everything's fine. Notice that I'm still online. Now nah, that's not going to work. Because, yeah, it did work. It showed me a single user. I thought it was going to error out because of that. So, the single user worked. The system catalog in master has the new location. And that's what we're about to verify. We're going to select the uh, the database name, type name of the file, physical location of the file from sysmaster files, just for Stack Overflow because nobody cares about the rest of these. We do that, and we see that the log file, so our number two here, I didn't sort it by anything, has been changed earlier. This said D data Stack Overflow underscore log LDF, just you know in the same location as the others. So master has this, which is great. That's what we wanted. So now what we need to do is we've got to take the database offline, we've got to move the file, and we've got to bring it back on. I like to put the multi-user step in here as well, 
right before I set it back or right before I take it offline. Because when I bring it back online after I move the physical file, bang, it's ready for use as soon as I run the online command. So I'm going to run these two. Which works just fine. Bring up a couple of windows so you can see this really, really complicated portion of this operation. Let me just move this down here. Move. It's not that big a file. And you see it right there where it belongs in the program file, SQL Server, yada, 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 data, day, data directory, which is exactly where I told it to go in the previous command. And now I do refresh over here, and I see that the offline did take. Set it back online. Refresh again. There's my database. Should be multi-user, so this window should work. Yep. Go to Files. And you see that my log, which is the bottom one, is now in the correct directory. If you've got to move a bunch, move a bunch of files, block out and set each. I like to set an alter database statement for each individual file and run them one at a time, and then go move them all. And the move, of course, you can use fan, you can use code. You can call SQL CMD. You can use XP command shell, or you can just copy it. It depends on on how big your files are. If you're moving 100 databases around and then they've all got you know, gigs and gigs and gigs or hundreds of gigs. If you may want to automate the whole thing. And I'm, I have no doubt that the team over at DBA tools has also got some PowerShell coolness and awesomeness, uh, to do the exact same thing. But this is a beginner video for somebody that's never done it. And for the, where the documentation at Microsoft, while accurate, might be a little confusing or there's just so much it's hard to tell. This is for you guys, you beginners. As always, if you have any comments on this or questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video or hit me up on Twitter at Kevin3NF. And that's it. Have a great day.